Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves, Episode 3. You're here with your Editors-in-Chief, uh, Tim Wilms, myself, and Sukas Fernando. Hello, everyone. This is our Tuesday review show where we will discuss the, the week's news and events and inform our listeners about the latest battles against their enemies of freedom and help to break the chains of control. So plenty has happened this week, so we'll get straight into it, Sukas. Yeah, and today we have three topics planned for this podcast, and we will start off with the Turnbull government's new asylum seeker policy, and we will move on to the US election, and of course we will talk about the um, Halloween and how Halloween is a bit of a debated topic in Australia these days. Yeah, so uh, we'll start with... Of course, it was on Sunday, it was announced that the Turnbull government was uh, uh, toughening up our border security policies, making it that any asylum seeker who comes by boat, including those who came who came all the way back in July uh, 2013, uh, would not be allowed to not just not be resettled in Australia, but not be allowed to come into Australia ever, uh, even if they were settled in a third country. So it, it was a it was a further it was a further beefing up of our of our border security and one that one that I welcome. But of course, the the bleeding hearts were all uh, uh, saying, "Oh, oh, we're you know the the cruelest country on earth. We're you know torturing people. We're we're so mean." And uh, that that was their reaction. And of course, the Labor Party has has has, has jumped uh, jumped in on that on that line. Yeah, I think, yeah, we have the usual, you know, it's racist, it's cruel sort of argument from the left, as usual. Yeah. Um, but we still, we will take 12,000 Syrian refugees, who are mainly Muslim. We do have that. Yeah. But, which uh, we don't like. Yeah, we're, we're not happy. Yeah. Yet. Like, like yeah. this is the whole thing. Like, uh, you know, they, they, they're making out that, oh, we're completely shutting down our refugee program, which which we're not. I mean, not. we've got those 12,000 Syrians on top of the 13,000 uh, we, we accept every year, which yeah. makes us the one, of most, one of the most generous nations uh, per capita. Yeah, I mean, it's how much is that? It's like... Um, What's twelve? Plus, it's twenty five thousand refugees. Yeah, that means yeah. this in, year in, in, or next in, year. In one year. In one year, exactly. Yeah. And again, we talked about this last week. How Turnbull, you know, went against half of Australians when he said we don't know enough, that we don't know much, that you know, we are taking Muslim refugees. But I suppose this is a good step in the right direction. I yeah. Think. Because he had that, uh, or he he moved the parliamentary motion that oh we're going to have a you know non discriminatory immigration policy and it was seconded by Bill Shorten so it was a it, it was ma- it was mainly a you know screw you to to one nation and in response to yeah. Pauline Hanson's uh, uh, maiden speech so yeah. Uh, clearly, uh, he he's still not listening to or half of Australians' concerns when it comes to Muslim immigration. But at least with this, he's well. At least the the coalition is realizing that in, uh, Australians, you know, do want control of our borders, especially uh, th- those who come unannounced by sea. Yeah, and we also want to save lives as well. I mean, one thousand people perished when they over, came here. Yeah, over one thousand. Over over one thousand people, so it's it's a bit ironic how Labor is you know speaking against this decision, but we are saving lives ultimately. So it's either save lives and protect our borders, or just let them come in, see more deaths at sea, and see uh, some sort of refugee crisis in this country. Yeah, and uh, uh, people are forgetting that under uh, Kevin Rudd uh, back in back in July 2013, yeah. which is when this uh, 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 legislation will be backdated to, that's when Kev- uh, Kevin Rudd, he ran ads in uh, in the Australian media saying that if you come by boat, you will never be re- resettled in Australia. So what they actually <laughs> announced was what, what Kevin Rudd announced in the, in the, mo- in the final months of his... Uh, second prime ministership so obviously it's another case of labor you know just jumping on the outrage bandwagon forgetting that you know they once had that position as well 
Yeah, that's what makes it really ironic because, you know, if Rod was doing this right now, they wouldn't see any problem with it at all. It's because the liberals are doing it that they see a problem with it. Yeah. And, and yeah, another reason why this, uh, uh, this, po- uh, this policy is important is because to protect the integrity of our um, yeah, refugee program. I mean, it shouldn't be if you've got the, abil- the financial resources to, to pay a people smuggler and jump to the front of the queue. Why, 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 should, why should you, just because you've got the money, uh, be, be first in when there's other people waiting in all other parts of the world to uh, be accepted as refugees? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's unfair for the legal migrants, isn't it? Because they've followed the procedures and the proper processes, but it turns out that the illegal migrants will end up getting an, an advantage in getting to this country. Yeah. And the left, they're all about uh, fairness, but they, uh, when it comes to our refugee program, they support the most unfair method of allocating refugee places that, you know, uh, the, the rich ones, uh, they get accepted first. I mean, it's ironic. Yeah, it is ironic. It's unfair. It's dangerous. I mean, they're advocating the 1,000 deaths at sea. I mean, who are they? Who are they? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're, we're actually quite, it's also worth adding, we're, we're quite lucky that you know, when the Abbott Coalition government, as it was then called, was elected in 2013, they were able to successfully you know, stop the boats. We haven't had a boat, I think, what, in about a year or, 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 may, or maybe even more. Uh, yeah. And we're looking at what's happening in Europe where, we've, where they've got over a million, million migrants coming into, coming into what, Germany alone. Exactly. That's that's exactly what we are trying to avoid. I mean, journalists have described Europe as an ethnic war zone. Germany is an ethnic war zone. Women are being raped, gang raped. Gay people are being, um, you know, harmed by the refugees. So I think we want to we want to avoid that and actually control our borders and decide who comes into our country. Yeah, and. Uh... This uh, this uh, new policy is just uh, is just a further way to to protect our borders because the uh, the government knows that the people smugglers will if they see any sign of weakness will resume putting people on boats and will and and will become you know uh, in uh, swamped by boats exactly the same way as Europe is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, boats, the refugees, they're ruining Europe. It's Paris is ruined. Sweden is gone almost and we don't want our country to be next yeah and it looks like with the way that labor carries on with you know echoing the 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 bleeding hearts uh viewpoint that we're only one one election or one government away from the borders being opened once again yeah so does that mean that labor will um well, they won't get into government, hopefully. Yeah, well, well they're not going to be kept out of government forever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they won the next election, the, the people smugglers would automatically uh, start sending people on boats again. And yeah, that's, would, yeah, that's the problem. And yeah. I wouldn't have much, uh, much faith that Labor would, would turn back the boats or, or, ha- or have, a, have, a, have a hardline policy. I mean, they just yeah, uh, buckle under the pressure of the parties left. Yeah, hopefully, if if they do get elected, if then hopefully they do what Kevin Rudd did and just be actually be be quite strict when it comes to migration. Well, we don't. Well, we well we don't know whether Kevin Rudd's po- po- he was only there for two months. We don't know if his policies a- a- actually worked. I mean, yeah, Rudd true. claimed that oh, I stemmed the flow, but it was only the the coalition that a- that actually stopped them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants Labour to be elected. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we don't want to, you know, we're already having trouble uh, assimilating the, the migrants and the refugees we have here, but we don't, we, you know, the last thing we need is, you know, an, uh, our, our borders thrown open and, 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 just, and just a huge influx of people from the third world. Exactly, and the main problem are the ones from the Middle East. I don't. Yeah, I think we all know how dangerous they can be when they come to the Western world, because again, going back to Europe, Germany is. We had we had all those rapes and all those writing in Germany, and the thing is, if they come here, then the same thing's going to happen here. 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're quite lucky that, that that we've avoided it so far, but, you know, we're, we've, still, we've still got our pro problems as well, especially in, you know, Western Sydney and parts of Melbourne. We do, we do. I mean, we already have radical, radicalization in this country, we do, um, in, for, for some people. We saw that with the Parramatta shootings um, this, this year, and, you know, it's just going to get worse if we let in more Islamic refugees into this country. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's good that, uh, yeah, it's good that our, our government is somewhat listening to the people and that um, they realise that the majority of Australians, you know, want, want, our, want our borders protected. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually quite surprised that Malcolm Turnbull would do this because his decision, his earlier decision to take in more um, Syrian refugees was, uh, was you know, well, it's just, it's just, it's just sort of, um, it's like a paradox, isn't it? It's like yeah. he accepted 12,000, but now he's sort of closing the borders. It's a good thing. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah. I'm surprised, though. With, with the Syrians, it's also important to note that we were told, uh, you know, we would only be accepting, uh, as they were called, pers persecuted minorities, yes. which was code yes. for, for Christians. But as yeah. we've... As uh, we found out, it's you know mo uh, mo most of them are uh, are Muslim, so we were we were sold short on that one. We were, we were, yeah. It's it, that, that was a very bad decision, and we had our rants last week about it, and it it was it was a lie. I mean, they lied to us about it, but yeah, yeah but you know, it's I, I like this measure. <laughs> yeah. And it's good that also um, Paul, uh, Pauline Hanson's having 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 a bit of an impact on the uh, of, on the the policy of the government. Um, uh, uh, she she put out a cheeky tweet, um, yeah, f uh, when the when this policy was announced, that saying you know uh, looks like the government is taking its cues from One Nation, just like last <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think. It just shows that she's quite successful right now because she is influential. She is right. Many of the things she actually predicted came true. So I think she has that influence in the government and therefore that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We need more people like that. Yeah. And well, she got four senators elected at the last election. She, exactly. Yeah. And, and she holds the balance of power in the Senate yeah. uh, with, with, her, with her four senators. So um, the government can't, can't completely ignore her. They can't. I mean, she's in quite a powerful position. Since she does hold the balance of power, I think she is in quite a powerful position. And that's a good thing for us, for yeah. this country. Uh, and there's also, you know, members of the Liberal Party like, um, yeah, Cory Bernardi and George Christensen who realise, you know, who are telling the Liberal Party, you know, if you, if you, if, you know, if you ignore, you risk uh, ignoring one nation at your peril. I mean, if you if you just dismiss them, they'll just grow stronger. They will because they'll end up they'll, they'll end up getting more supporters. I mean, most One Nation supporters are actually liberal supporters. They used to be liberal supporters, but they support support One Nation now. So the thing is, if they ignore them, then the Liberal Party will lose supporters, and One Nation will get them. Yeah. And um, One Nation, they also get disaffected Labor working class voters as well. But it, but it seems that the Labor Party couldn't couldn't give a stuff about them. Uh, yeah, they yeah. mainly just prefer their their new progressive inner city supporters. Exactly, it's I, the Labor Party is I think focusing too much on those inner city dwelling supporters instead of looking at their other voter base, which is the working class rural people um and i wouldn't be surprised if the rural labor supporters would start supporting pauline hansen because the labor labor party isn't doing really good at all they don't they don't they can't represent our interests anymore yeah i mean they they just go along with with the progressive line uh, egged on by egged on by the media i mean they they love getting praise from the abc and shows like the project yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. And we saw, like Wally uh, Ali as yeah, well. We saw yeah, his, uh, he, he got an article published in the New York Times saying, "Oh, oh yes, how 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 much of a horrible uh, nation we are with our with our you know refugee policy." Yeah, yeah, and that means they're ignoring many Australians because the thing is, many rural Labour supporters are quite socially conservative, mm. um, and 
they are against immigration and refugee intake. So the thing is, by ignoring them, it's their own downfall. You know, it's it's their downfall. It's their one-way ticket to going down. Um, so yeah. Well, we hope that one day the Labor Party will will learn its lesson. We hope they do, we, and we hope when they do, they're gone out of our political system. <laughs> So we'll move on to our next uh, topic now, which is the latest twist in the US presidential election, which is yes. now eight days to go because we don't find out the result until in Australia until Wednesday the 9th. And of course, we had the news that the FBI is reopening the investigation into Hillary's unsecured emails, thanks to uh, an investigation they were uh, they were carrying out into uh, the infamous uh, sexter um, Anthony Weiner. Yeah, he was actually a New York congressman, actually, which is very that's very um, controversial. Um, it was actually six hundred fifty. 650,000 emails they're investigating. Yeah, and of course there's the the 32,000 uh, emails that that, sh that she deleted. Yes. Of just, you know, despite that the US government uh, retains retains all the the internet history of uh, of all the citizens with the NSA, they can't find Hillary's yeah. emails. Yeah, it's that says something. That says something. Um but yeah, this is a very sort of surprising. I mean, I didn't really expect a new investigation, and this has resulted in Trump getting more supporters because Trump is actually um, narrowing the polls. Yeah, I've, I've, the main site that I look at is the uh, Nate Silver's Five Thirty Eight uh, poll aggregator, and yeah. it was it was up to about um, Clinton was up to nearly ninety percent chance of winning. It's gone gone down to seventy five now, and Trump is is back ahead in Ohio and Arizona, and is closing in in Nevada. That's still not enough for him to win, but he's he's still in the game. So, he is. He's definitely in the game. Yeah, I mean, Florida's still within reach. Um, yeah, Pennsylvania is the is probably the most difficult for him to win, and he needs to win that to win the presidency. Okay, well, I hope he wins Pennsylvania. I want him to win. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's not he's not out of it yet, and. Uh, it's it's interesting how this yeah, investigation has has come back open because the reason why Anthony Weiner uh, has anything to do with Hillary Clinton is because uh, Anthony Weiner's wife uh, Uma Abedin yeah. she's yeah. Uh, she's one of um, Hillary's uh, I, I'm not sure if she's chief of staff but she's pretty high up in the Clinton campaign yeah so, she's an she's an assistant I know that she's like an aide yeah and so. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Weiner's emails led to her emails, led to Hillary Clinton's emails. Yeah, <laughs> and you know we we're seeing all these Facebook memes on Huma Abedin. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we don't know what their personal relationship is like. I mean, but the FBI hasn't really said much about it, about the actual issue. Yeah, we don't we don't know what's in the emails, but obviously yeah. they can't reveal much because it's a, it's an ongoing investigation. Um, yeah, so we would like to we we would like to know a bit more. But the FBI director, uh, you know, he he wouldn't be reopening the investigation uh, what eleven days out from an election unless he had uh, unless he had compelling evidence. Yeah, I mean. It's still hard to say whether this will have a very big impact after all. Well, well, it is having having an impact. There was, I think, a poll that said 33% of voters are now less likely to vote for Hillary Clinton. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, I think it's making a lot of voters uh, reflect and say, you know, well, what Trump said in the like Access Hol Hollywood videos was pretty cra uh, crass, but at least yeah. he's, you know, not a crook like Hillary trying to cover exactly. up. I mean, it's it's between a criminal and a person who says mean things. Come on. Uh, and it's interesting. The left, the uh, the FBI director James Comey, they when he initially announced that you know he was um, not going to be um, uh, charging Hillary back in May, they were saying like, "Oh, good on him," and now they're saying, "Oh, he's playing politics." Yeah, yeah. I mean, because. 
the thing is, I think the Republicans are using the um, this for their own advantage, which, which they should, because they're using language like they're reopening the case to make sure that people are sort of remembering the actual investigation in the first place. To make sure that they will support Trump. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, tr uh, Trump said, you know, this is a uh, a bigger uh, bigger scandal since Watergate. It's probably worse than Watergate. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Watergate was it was Watergate was only the uh, about the cover up of the the break into the DNC headquarters. This involves, you know, national security. This uh, uh, email email scandal. Except, I mean, it's 650,000, 650,000 emails. This is big, much bigger than Watergate. Mm. If it got in the wrong hands, then, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really bad. Uh, and of course, uh, there were, uh, uh, they've been talking about there was this uh, Marine who pretty much did the same, 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 thing, as, same thing as Hillary, which was um, having uh, classified information on an unsecured, uh, uh, on an unsecured server. He got sent to jail. Yeah, 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 he did. And we are seeing all these murders as well when it comes to people revealing, when it comes to whistleblowing. Oh yes, are, they're, yeah, they're the, myster the mysterious deaths. Of yeah, all the there are mysterious all the, deaths. All the people, people who've uh, crossed paths with the Clintons, and there's been those hilarious memes of um, yeah, Hillary they have... saying, oh, you know, uh, when Anthony Weiner commits suicide, I'll be very sad." Yeah, I, mean, I saw one today. It's like I have to suicide you or something, which was quite hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It's a, well, as a Trump supporter, I like this development because it means people will support Trump more. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely not not over yet, not over yet. I mean, yeah, uh, f f there there was uh, there's been jokes that oh, Hillary is now president elect. No, it's 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 not over yet. It's not over yet at all. I mean, there's a lot, and we have to remember that we have all these professors who are saying that Trump will win. Like um, a professor who actually predicted the election since 1984, he actually said that Trump will win. I still, I don't listen to those professors so much because they're like some some of them are bound to be wrong eventually. Uh, I suppose. I, I go yeah. by the 538 uh, average. I mean. Um, hopefully, it narrows in the ne in the next few days, and Trump pulls ahead in some in, in some other states. The the Senate is still um, the the Democrats look like they're going to win the Senate, but even that's narrowed now. It is, yeah. Um, I mean, I would rather rep the Republicans win the Senate at least. Well, it, it looks like they'll hold on to the House, but if they if they can uh, win the House, the Senate, and the presidency, that'll ensure well, it should ensure that the Supreme Court, um, you know, actually defends the Constitution. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, if you if, if you look at the past, if you look at the history, then Ronald Reagan won the election, but the Carter was actually leading him in the polls. Mm. So you know, it's not over yet at all. And yeah. yes, the, the Republicans might keep the House um, and the, the Democrats might win the Senate, but you know, it's not over yet because the polls don't mean much, always. Yeah. And there's yeah. also that news. It wasn't just the reopening of the email investigation. It was also the announcement by the health insurance companies that the premiums are going to be rising 20 oh, percent yes. because of yes. Obamacare. And Hillary just said, no, Obamacare's you know, wonderful. It's perfect. We're going to keep going with it, which I mean, you know, when healthcare is going to cost 25 percent more, you know, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, that, that, that's a pretty concerning development. It is. I mean, it's a classic example of how a, polit a politician is ignoring reality. I mean, mm. the costs are rising, the premiums are rising, but now he or she is saying, no, it doesn't matter. It's a good, it's a, it's a good thing. Because she will, she is a proponent of Obamacare and she will take it with her if, if she's elected. And the thing is, well, if, if she's elected, then the premiums will keep rising because they are rising now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also the fact that um, you know she uh, she's also she she's got her head in the sand on um, pretty much all the issues on immigration. She's like, no, there's you know no problem with the the borders or our um, yeah. immigration program. Just you know let them all in.
I mean, she's she always had her head in the sand when it comes to immigration. Mm. She is she always supported open borders. She wants to take in migrants. Um, it's a five hundred percent increase of what she proposed before, uh, and you know it's and it's. I, I hope people will realize that, that she doesn't have it. That she doesn't have she doesn't have she doesn't have a grasp of reality. So I hope people realize that because. He, She's denied the problems about immigration. She has, she has denied the problems about Obamacare. So what else does it take for people to not vote for her? Yeah. I have, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's... I mean, she, she is definitely, like, the, the worst worst candidate the, the Democrats could have could have selected. I mean, um, if, it, if it was a fair contest in the Democratic primary, I mean, Sanders, Sanders would have won the nomination. Yeah, but there are allegations that, sh- that that the primaries were rigged. Yeah, I mean we're seeing, of course, the the WikiLeaks emails confirm that that uh, you know Hillary was being assisted by the by the by the DNC. We do. We actually have a big compilation. We might actually um, copy and paste that link to the description. Um, it's a compilation of all the information given by the WikiLeaks, and it says it does say that Hillary may have rigged the actual um, DNC um, primaries. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, tr- and Trump's allegation that the election's rigged, we're actually seeing, uh, we're seeing you know, uh, stories emerge of, you know, uh, Democrats trying to vote twice. Yes, we have all these, um, these videos of, like, Democrats voting twice and, like, all these um, voting machines. Mm. They seem to be... They seem to have some glitches in them, so that's a bit scary. That's very scary. Yeah. Uh, and and of course, we discussed it last week the the possibility of the Clinton presidency leading to a war with with Russia. Russia, yes. Yeah. Yes. And of course, Trump, yeah, came out and said, you know, vote for Hillary is a vote for for World War Three. Trump said that. Jill Stein said that. I mean, Jill Stein, the Green Party leader, the Green Party candidate. She's a little strong over Hillary. Mm. That like, says something. Like, like I can't believe like these progressives. They're just saying, you know, Hillary is, you know, she'll, you know, be the same candidate. What, what, like, what's their reaction <laughs> going to be when Hillary starts a war with Russia? Are they going to be like, uh, you know, at least Hillary doesn't say mean things. I know exactly. I, I, I've seen all these comments. I listed all the things Hillary has done, and they reply. Well, at least she, at least it's not Trump. Okay, you know, I'm like, what? What does that even mean? Yeah, and, and also there's an hilarious social media campaign called uh, Draft Our Daughters, which is yes, uh, which is obviously it's uh, it's making fun of the fact. Well, if you want women to be equal, then they should fight yeah. wars. And of course, yeah, is going to start the next war. She is, and when she does, then we will we will have to draft our daughters. Mm. It's going to be a big war because, mm. of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, feminists they want they want uh, women to like be in what's their big one in STEM fields, but they don't want yeah. women to do the dirty and dangerous jobs or fight wars. Yeah, I mean the the equality argument is only useful for some aspects, yeah. like the STEM and yeah. CEO pay and all that. And, and of course, uh, the feminists argue that you know, oh, women wouldn't start wars, but Hillary um, looks, looks like she could start the the biggest war of them all. She has started wars. I mean, if women don't start wars, then why did she vote for the Iraq War? Yeah, that that reminds me of another hilarious meme, which was George W. Bush with Hillary Clinton saying, uh, "I couldn't have done it without you." Yeah, well, that's that meme is really good because it's really accurate as well because she she supported the war and let's not forgetting that yeah all the american neocons are, are voting for her yes i mean we have a george bush voting for her which is a shame really yeah so uh we'll, we'll obviously talk about the election election again next week it'll be yeah it'll be election eve uh American time it will be. For, yeah, it for, will for be. our next review episode. So <laughs> uh, who knows what will, what will happen since then? But uh, yeah, it's a, a lot's riding on this election. I mean, it's, yeah. May, I mean, it's the future of you know Western the world. society. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, and the world. I mean, and the world. Yeah. yeah. 
not not trying to be too dramatic. Yeah, but it is. I mean, World War Three is imminent, so. <laughs> yeah. But let's move on to the next topic, and our next topic is about Halloween, which is <laughs> yeah. interesting. So it was Halloween in Australia last night. Halloween is happening in America as we speak. Yeah, uh, Halloween <laughs> has becoming becoming more and more popular in in Australia in the past few years, mainly due to I'd say well globalization, uh, yeah. social media, and you know the the effect that American culture uh, has on us. And yeah, you know, I like Halloween. You know, in Australia, it's a bit of fun. The the kids get to dress up in costumes. You know, get to get to go around and get candy, and that's you know it's a celebration of sort of you know scary. Uh, you know, s- s- scary things in our culture, horror, fantasy, and obviously Halloween parties in Australia are growing more popular with adults dressing up as well. So, you know, yeah. I, th- I think I think it's a good thing. You know, it's a bit of fun, uh, you know, celebrates sort of, uh, you know, a genre a genre in our culture. But, of course, you know, there's all the, the wowsers and killjoys and, you know, the American yeah. people is like, it's American, we shouldn't, you know, have that and stuff. Just like, oh, you know, why why do you have to why why do you have to you know ruin everyone's good time? Yeah, the thing is, I mean, I had the trick or treaters coming yesterday to my house, and the thing is, is Halloween even specifically American? I mean, it originates from Britain. It, it it's a Celtic sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it doesn't have any actual like American like. Like it, like it doesn't actually like in the folklore and uh, uh, mythology of Halloween, and it actually you know doesn't mention anything American. I mean, it's not like Fourth, yeah. of, Fourth of July, which is like American Independence. Halloween, you know, it it can easily be adopted to any country. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, criticizing the celebration of Halloween in Australia is a bit like criticizing Christmas to me, because they're both they're, they're Western celebrations. Yeah. Yeah, and plus, you know, we have, you know, uh, uh, you know, spooky, spooky things in Australia. Ghost, ghost stories. We we watch a lot of, you know, horror movies. So, you know, it it is relevant relevant to Australia. And so, what if it came from America? I mean, uh, I think all those people who decry, you know, American things, they need to stop consuming like anything American. Yeah, I think they're taking the Americanized Americanization thing a bit too far. I think when they yeah. use that argument. I mean, stop watching TV shows like, you know, yeah. Breaking, Breaking Bad or Mad Men if you hate America so much. Exactly. I mean, criticizing Halloween, as I said, criticizing Halloween is a bit like criticizing Christmas. Mm. So, um, it's not like we're celebrating the 4th of July here. Yeah. It's just Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, and it's and it's also the left don't like it, or because it celebrates, you know, consumerism. Because they point out that the you know the supermarkets and the big retail chains chains are you know selling Halloween candy and Halloween costumes. But you know, so what? Like, you know, I know, I just yeah. I just don't get that argument. I just yeah. cannot understand that argument. Yeah, like people, are, you know, they wouldn't be selling this stuff unless like people uh, were buying them and like were actually enjoying the whole experience. Yeah, yeah, and it's really it's really bad to ru- ruin that fun, isn't it? Yeah, and, and plus, you know, uh, I don't think you can point to sort of any you know recreational thing which doesn't cost money. I mean, you know, if you want to go to the movies or, uh, uh, you know, go to go to some you know sporting event, newsflash, it's not free. I mean, you've got to pay yeah. for it. Like you, you'll have to you know stop having fun at all if you want to, you know, n- not engage in consumerism. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, ultimately, are we even surprised that the progressive left is going against it? I mean, these are the people who um, criticize Australia Day. I mean, yeah. it's not really surprising that they're going against Halloween, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, anything to, you know, stop a, stop a good time. Exactly. And the thing is, I want to bring in... Well, because the thing is, um, SJWs use big days to sort of market their radical ideas. Oh, yeah, like, what is it, May Day, International Women's Day, what is it, uh, yeah, I mean, 10 different, like, LGBTQ days? Yes, yeah, there's that, yes, I mean, after all, aren't those consumeristic days as well? Oh, well, I'm sure there'd be people trying to sell stuff. 
Exactly. So, but I was also going to mention how the SJWs use Halloween to criticize things like cultural appropriation. Yes, the the war the war on yeah. Halloween, uh, of course. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we we just saw in the last twenty four hours Hillary Duff get in trouble for her um, Halloween uh, outfit, and of course, you know, being a spineless celebrity, she apologized. Yes. Uh, uh. But it's just people are you know people are dressing up as. American Indians and it's racist. People yeah. are, it's the blackface. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah, I, yeah. I noticed that uh, some of the supermarkets were selling uh, like a Halloween face paint, and I noticed there was there was blackface paint. And I was like, huh, yeah, you know, they're they're selling you know pr- uh, uh, paint that you know could be used to be racist. Yeah, we had videos about that, the blackface paint, mm. and it was telling. He was telling white people <laughs> to not wear the black the black face paint. Um, it was a video by, it was seriously. Dot TV on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that was a channel. And yeah, they're just criticizing how pe- white people are wearing black paint oh, yeah. on their faces. I mean, there's nothing to it. There's nothing racist about it. It's just yeah. black paint. <laughs> and, and 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 don't forget that also. Yeah, it's not just the the black face and the you know cultural appropriation. It's also yeah. uh, you know if you if like you dress up in a you know sexy Halloween costume, then you're you know fat fat shaming. Yeah. Uh, even if yeah. you dress up as a zombie, you're being ableist. <laughs> Yeah, they have all these labels now. I mean, the thing is, just ignore them, I think. Yeah, and, and of course, there's, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, student groups sending out, you know, don't wear this on, on Halloween. Yeah, I mean, with the, the sexy costume, for example, they're using that as a thing against misogyny. Mm. That's their argument, which is, it has, that's, it has no basis on logic at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and also with cultural appropriation, like we all have to remember that it's bullshit. It, like, it's like not. It a is. Thing. Like, for example, like you're appropriating white culture. I mean, you're taking, you know, the the you know uh, the practices and traditions of white people and appropriating them, uh, you know, if, uh, for your own use. Exactly. I mean, the thing is. It's not racist when non-white people adopt white things. Yeah. It's only racist when white people adopt non-white things. Yeah, and, and so, like that's the same thing with like ha- like Halloween that, um, you know, where like going back and this is in direct contradiction to cultural appropriation that you know uh, part of multiculturalism is celebrating like all the foreign holidays, so like Chinese New Year, um, yeah. Ramadan, um, but. You know, oh, we can't, you know, possibly celebrate an American uh, American day. I mean, you know, we're, we're not allowed to, you know, import, you know, white holidays. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because the thing is, if they attack Chinese New Year, it'll be racist. Yeah. But if they attack the um, American holidays, it's not racist. Um, uh, because, yeah. because America is evil. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the, ide- that's the ideology they have. Mm. Um, it's like their mindset. Yeah, it's and of, really impressive. Yeah, and of course another thing that Halloween brings out is like you know the 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 helicopter parents and you know uh, co- uh, cotton wool uh, parents you know who claim that you know kids trick or treating they're going over to strangers' house and we're supposed to teach them stranger danger you know they could be <laughs> you know abducted or kidnapped or um, that you know the the strangers could give them you know poison candy. I actually came across a woman yesterday who said that and that's. And it's like there's hardly been any cases ever of that ever happening to children on Halloween. Exactly. I mean, it, I think it's quite legitimate that they have the fears. I mean, they are parents after all. Yeah. But... It's just... They're taking the argument a bit too far, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's the same people who, like, you know, don't uh, get scared, like, letting their kids, like, walk home from school or, you know, going to, like, a, you know, public toilet on their own. Like, so, <laughs> yeah. like they just worry that, you know, there's, you know, f- um, predators everywhere. And, like, you know, if, yeah. they, they, if you bring up your children like that, they're going to, you know, have the, um, you know, the worst, worst, worst social skills and <laughs> social skills ever it's it's quite harmful it is because if you teach that to your children then they're gonna have a very different mindset mm. and it's gonna be really hard for them to actually live 
in this world. Um, so it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing to do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, if there's the uh, free range, uh, free range parenting uh, movement that you know, to, uh, it's best to teach your children, you know, self self reliance from from a young age, as it helps them, you know, be more independent and yeah. you know, also 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 a more um, a strong a stronger person. Yeah. I, mean, I like that, the, the that movement. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is all like uh, this sort of, of you know, if, yeah, kids trick or tre- uh, trick or treating at strangers' houses. It's also they're also the type of people who, who think that you know every second person is like you know a pedophile. Yeah, <laughs> they're irrational fears. Yeah, I, I mean, like you know, the chances of like anything happening to your like child are uh, extremely, extremely slim. And of course, a uh, child's more likely to be harmed by you know someone who's close to them. Yeah, and there are lots of children walking around during Halloween, mm. so it's not like because it's a very public event. You know, yeah. it runs and, everywhere. You know, so. if you are con- if you are like concerned about kids trick or treating, then you know, chaperone them. Like, you know, go with yeah. them. Like, and also, like, if you're worried about you know candy being poisoned, then like, don't 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 let your like children take any like uh, like opened opened candy. Like, make sure it's like already wrapped. Yeah, I mean, there are common sense strategies for this. I mean, yesterday I had parents coming to the house as well. The kids weren't alone. They were with, with parents. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's just your irrational fears are, are very regressive because they will have a bad impact on your kids. Mm. And you can solve it by using some common sense. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, irrational fears and hysteria. I mean, they're yeah, they're they're not just bad for economic policy and social policy. Yeah. They're also bad for society in general. It is. I mean, we have all these tumblerinas and all these um, progressive inner city left wing people who are very ir- irrational. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So if, uh, I'm glad that yeah, Halloween is. Is is on the rise in on on the rise in Australia, and that you know everyone's getting into it, and everyone's having a bit of fun of it, and hopefully as the years as the years progress, that in, in Australia they will just keep keep going, growing bigger, and you know the 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 negative killjoys will will so, will slowly die out. Hopefully, hopefully that hopefully that will happen, and hopefully we become a more rational society. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, because the last thing we need is you know more, f- uh, f- it, it is more people to be you know just hysterical about everything. Yeah, the last thing we need is tumblerinos in parliament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that brings us to the end of the end of uh, the Halloween topic, and also brings us to the end of the the podcast for yeah. for, for this Tuesday. So. Um, yes, uh, thanks for listening uh, once again. Uh, uh, just to let you know, we now have the show. It's available to subscribe in iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. So we're slowly taking over all of these uh, uh, podcasting podcasting programs. So you can now listen to us on the go and in your, in your car. And the link will be shared um, in this uh, episode's show notes page. So you'll know where to, where to subscribe. Yeah, um, thanks everyone for listening, and we do have something planned for Thursday, don't we, yes, Tim? Yes, yes, we, we, we will definitely be doing our interview, our first ever interview episode this Thursday. Uh, it'll, yeah. it'll definitely be taking place. We do have a guest locked in, so uh, <laughs> I promise it will happen this time, and I hope <laughs> that you do come back and, and listen to that. Um, yeah, so goodbye for now, and don't forget to, be, uh, to keep visiting the Unshackled dot net for for all the latest news uh because uh, the enemies of freedom are always are always uh trying to launch a new assault against us so make sure you ke- keep checking that and yeah make sure you you sign up for our our newsletter f- uh, like us on facebook and of course uh subscribe uh to, to our podcast on your preferred uh, on your preferred outlet so, so thanks, thank you again for listening, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.